I'm going to do a little something different here with the channel. I just finished making a longer repair video that has a lot of commentary in response to some articles in that 50 minute video. But I wanted to split out this one piece because I really want to know what you guys think about this. Why is it that Apple would, would say your data is, is gone. Your data is impossible to get. Now, there's, why would they do that? That doesn't make sense. What kind of jerk, what kind of mean-spirited villain would, would be so callous and heartless and cruel? People, to, crying mothers, to say the baby pictures are gone. There's nothing you can do. But they do say that. But when I think about why would this narrative exist, why does it make sense? I think I know why. I got a good theory. You tell me. What do you think about this theory? When I think about Apple and data recovery, in order for data recovery to happen, that means somebody has to make that dead phone turn on again and work. Now, if Apple said, oh, sure, you know, people like, we don't do it, but people like Jessa and, and hundreds of of others, thousands of people, um, they do it all the time. In fact, you can even watch them do it on YouTube. And sometimes it's really simple. Sometimes they'll just like, it, sometimes they just take like a razor blade and knock a capacitor off and then boom, phone works again. It's really amazing. You know, we don't do it. We can't recommend it. We don't be responsible. You know, maybe your bad stuff's going to happen. I don't know. But since you're crying, you should know that there's lots of people out there that consider data recovery um, very straightforward for water damage devices like your toilet phone. Uh, they don't say that at all. They don't say that at all. So the, um, the, we've gotten a lot of letters. We've gotten a lot of sort of private letters, anonymous stuff from Apple employees. And it's pretty clear that the written policy is when someone says, can you do anything about my wet phone? They know. When they say, but all my pictures are on it, you say, too bad. And they, if, if they kind of check the box of saying, is there any place or can you do data recovery? I just want, I don't care about the phone, I just want my pictures. So if pressed, then Apple will refer, according to their policy, and they all don't follow the policy, they will refer you to uh, expensive data recovery places. Places like drive savers where your basic knock a capacitor off with a razor costs two thousand dollars. So, so expensive data. So why would they do that? Why would they do that? And I think about this. Remember this from last summer? So Apple at CES paid a bunch of money to say what happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone. That costs a lot of money. So Apple has a lot of vested interest. They are incentivized to create the impression that data recovery is impossible because that's, that's their marketing. That's their shtick, right? And someone even wrote to me saying, you know who, uh, you know who likes iPhones? Criminals. Because criminals believe that the iPhone is uncrackable, unbreakable. You can't ever get any data out of an iPhone. And that's why the iPhone is the phone of choice for the discerning criminal because of this whole privacy thing. And then when I think about it, I think, you know, if, I, if my company was really predicated and really married to uh, the, the number one guiding principle of security at all costs, so much so that when people said, hey, man, the, the world is going to end unless you can get me into this iPhone, I say no. We will never have a back door. There's nothing we can do. You can pay us a million dollars. You can compel us. Never happening. We will not ever get your data out of that phone. That's their whole shtick, and, and that's fine. That's a business decision. But if, you, if that's your whole message, then what does it look like when somebody realizes that uh, Jessa and all of those people seem to be able to get these dead phones to turn back on? I thought you said it was impossible. What does it feel like? You realize that you once had a wet iPhone 5. And like me and like a bunch of people I know, you don't even bother having a passcode. It's annoying. Type it in that path. Forget it. 
before fingerprint sensor, you know, before face ID. Not type it in a passcode. Screw that. But that phone fell in the toilet one day. It's dead. You went to the Apple store and you said, hey, I got a wet iPhone. Is there anything you can do? Nope. Is there any way to get this phone to turn back on? Nope. All right. Well, then I guess I got to get a new phone. And you turned that phone in under the premise that there was no recovering it. How does it feel to you when you realize that someone out there in the world, somewhere in the back room, somewhere where that maybe got, you know, who knows what happened to it? Did it get thrown in a trash can? Probably not. You know, it probably went to some sort of a large volume refurbisher or recycler that's under an Apple contract. And now you are back in the same boat where you're having to rely on the integrity of the professionals that are working in that back room. And what do we know about those places? We know that a lot of the places that Apple contracts with are full of poor working conditions. You know, you can watch Lewis's recent video. You know, we've got the suicide nets at Foxconn. Yeah, you know, maybe not the places where the, the you know, in, in, you know, we know that people working there steal schematics and put them on the internet. We know that. We know that because we have the schematics. So how does it feel when you're trusting those guys, not the professionals that you're talking to, you're reading their reviews and you're choosing them. You're trusting the people that are the workers in the dark building with no bathrooms. Those guys that steal schematics and post them on the internet, those guys are the ones now that have your, your wife's nudes on that wet iPhone 5 that never had a passcode when you realize that all they have to do is, you know, do a, run a couple of joints and now that thing's working again, how does that make you feel? So I think that that narrative can't get out. Can't tell people that. We can't let people know that. So it's in Apple's best interest. If I was writing the policy, I might say, oh, they probably never saw it coming that there would be stay-at-home moms recovering data from Toilet, phone, toilet iPhone 5s. They probably never thought that when this whole, you know, you know, security, security, security kind of came around. And now that cat is out of the bag. So they, they cannot say, oh, sure, it's easy. Sometimes, yeah. Find somebody around you, it's probably fine. Definitely worth a shot. Maybe it's just a bad battery. Who knows? Definitely go check it out. Could be really easy. They can't say that. They can't say that because what happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone if you drop it in a toilet. That's what the bottom of that sign is implied, right? And they can't go back in time. They can't, they can't erase that. So they say it's impossible because that's the only thing it makes sense for them to say that fits within their entire world that they have built. And then if pressed, out of compassion, they will say, all right, fine. Maybe it's not totally impossible. If you have $2,000, you can go down the street to, those, to the guys at Drive Savers that watch Jess's videos and also are uncertified and untrained. You know, those, those guys, we'll let those guys, you can pay them $2,000. That gives you a peace of mind that maybe you're, you're not going to you know, have the, the people in the back of the, of the ref, refurbishing warehouse at Apple, whoever they outsource that to, we don't know. Those guys probably aren't going to pay $2,000 to have some delicate surgery so that they can look at your wife's old news, you know, probably. So that's what I think is going on. I think that that, that that is likely the reason why. Not that Apple doesn't want to do it, not that they don't think they can make money, that it's just a huge part of their, of their golden rule, the, the number one commandment, the only commandment, which is, you know, <laughs> uh, Thou shalt not recover data because <laughs> it goes against their entire privacy stick. So that's my theory on why it is that Apple is claiming that these phones are unrecoverable. Um, there you go. And I also uh, would love to know what you guys think. So tell me in the comments below. And I would, I'm putting more resources into YouTube these days and I want to uh, I kind of wanted to do an experiment because I'm a scientist to kind of see how does a tiny video that's just sort of a thought 
play versus the, the longer format repair. So if you actually want to see what happens to Kyle's 4S uh, and see the recovery, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be also uploading that separately. So let me know which, which one you prefer.